I'm going to show you how to make a camera system. So, you've probably seen it in all the Unity and all the uh, big game studios, big game engines. They have a built-in camera where you can move the camera around and then the sprite moves with it. It's useful for scrolling platformers and for top-down games because you might want to move your player around and make it so that you can't see the whole map at once. Here I'm just going to code a base project here so that you probably have this and then I'm going to teach you how to convert it. Alright, so you have your program, you have this movement script. This is a trashy movement script, but whatever. <laughs> it works for the tutorial. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is create two variables, camera X and camera Y. Make sure they're for all sprites. Now you're going to make two private variables, X and Y. Oh crap, I did that wrong. Uh, and hopefully you're still in like, uh, not very far through with your game because it's going to be kind of hard to convert everything. But basically, if you do have a lot of sprites, you just drag them into there so that they have the same thing, but they're all private. And those private variables are helpful for clones and stuff, and I'll get into using the system later. All right, you're going to want to make a block called position and hit OK. Now, with this block, you're going to say go to x minus camera x, y, y minus camera y, and now you've got the position block. Now, very important, make sure it's always running. If you have a death animation, make sure that that, that clone is still running the position script. There's nothing weirder than uh, killing an enemy, running away from the enemy, and then it sticks to your screen. It looks really, really weird. <sighs> anyway, when flag clicked, forever, position. And then of course you can do a when I starts clone. And a tip for making it so that it always runs, have, a, have the regular when I starts clone forever, or repeat until this condition is true so that it can delete this clone. Anyway, when you have that script, you also have another script that's when I start as clone forever position. It's pretty simple, but very helpful. Now, I'm going to... Basically, it's X and Y are both zero, so that means it's at center. And let's set camera X and set camera Y to mouse X and mouse Y. And let's test the project. It may look reversed, but remember, my mouse is where the camera is. So if you just keep that in mind, it looks normal. Because remember, he's staying in the same place, it's just that our camera is moving, which means our relative view is different. So, this is working, that's good, but there is one problem. If we go into the edge, here, let me times this by two so it's stronger. Okay, so now, around here, he should be off screen, but he just stays there with his dumb, fuzzy little cheek. And this is because of the dumb scratch X and Y limit. They had no reason to put that in there, but they did. So what happens is that he can't go off screen. So. What can we do? Pretty simple. Get an if else. Get an and. Get two equals. Them in either side of the and. Duplicate x. Get x position. Not x, but x position. Do the same for y. Them in the corresponding ones. If the x position that it should be at, the real x position that it should be at equals x position, and then the same for y. All right. So what this says is it says, am I at the proper location? Because what happens here is that its proper location is like over here, but its real location is over here. So it's going to check, is this true? And if it is true, that means it's on screen and it could show. And then otherwise, that means it's off screen and it should hide. Now watch this. It just goes off screen. It is a little bit sudden if you slow it down, but it's if you're going fast, it doesn't, it's not really that sudden it looks like he's going off screen and this is very helpful all right let's take that out of there okay so now what you're going to want to do is here's a problem what if your clone is hiding it's still showing because it thinks that it's on screen which it is and then it shows and we don't want that so how do we fix this we use ghost effect set ghost effect to 100 and this is for hide and then set ghost effect to zero for showing and now it's not showing because it's hidden so that is good um let's show him again so that's all well and good he can go off screen and he can move around but now you're probably wondering how to use these variables okay so it's pretty simple <laughs> you just take any x position change and then just set it to x and then 
change it by the same amount, and now he moves. And now what you're probably going to want to do... Okay, so now you know how to change, convert uh, your normal thing to uh, using these variables. And also, go to is just set x, set y, so that's pretty simple. But now you need a player sprite. What about the player sprite? Well, it's simple. Uh, you just get two more variables, player x and player y. Uh, for all sprites, because you're probably going to want these variables to be used by all things, so you can point towards them and stuff. One problem you might come into is that the move, you can't use move steps. Go watch my tutorial of how the move steps blocks work, block works, and then you can, then you'll know how to get around this. It would be nice if we add a little bit more. What about... Camera zoom. Yes, we're going to add camera zooming. Alright, let's do this. Alright, so you're going to need a new for this sprite only variable, call it size, and this size variable will be the size. Yeah, that's pretty self explanatory. Alright, now for your position loop, you're going to set size to size times camera zoom. And for the X and Y, you're going to times camera zoom. Duplicate that, put the Y in there, and put the X in there. And then replace these with that, and you're done. Now you have camera zoom. The way you use this is uh, you have to have a decimal number. I recommend anywhere from 0 0.01 to 2 because 2 would be like very zoomed in and then 1 would be normal zoom and then 0 would not be good. Never have 0. You should have 0 0.01. That causes some errors when you go to 0. So let's set camera zoom to 1 and everything works as normal. Uh, oh, right. Set size. The size is not good. Okay, so size uh, should just be 100 normally, and now if I, why is that not working? Uh, oh, camera zoom wasn't one, I guess. I'm confused, why isn't this working? Um, That was set color effect. Okay. Uh, you probably didn't see all that because it was edited out, but I was sitting here scratching my head for like five minutes because I was like, uh, why isn't it showing? I accidentally <laughs> set color effect to zero. Okay, so now it's working, and this is at camera zoom one. It's the exact same. Everything is normal, but now we can zoom in to camera zoom two, and now we're zoomed in. And, uh... This might look a little wacky, it might look like a little movement is way too big, and that's because as we zoom in, a little thing looks a lot bigger. So what we should do is, for uh, this camera script, we should times camera zoom. And then if you ever use, uh, if you're ever using change or set camera X and camera Y, you don't usually have to do times camera zoom, it's not really going to matter usually, but if you're going to do something like this, it might feel a little bit more normal to do this. So now we're super zoomed in, and then what's fun is that we can zoom out, and now we're very zoomed out, and actually I can't, oh, oh, he's over there, and if I move my mouse around, it's like not even doing anything. Um, yeah, let's do 0 0.5. So now we're zoomed in more. Okay, so actually we don't want that. We want, we don't want times. We want divide. Sorry about that. We want, we want divide since that means that is, as you zoom in, it will get harder to move around. And then when you're zoomed out, it's a lot more. Yep, sorry about that. That's really backwards. And now it's divided by one, so it's normal. And then if I go into camera zoom 2, now it's uh, still normal. So that's good. Um, and then also we can zoom in even further if we wanted to. Oh, and he does not like that. He does not like that. Oh, that's just because it's rounding. Yeah, so if you want, you can uh, put rounds around these. <laughs> rounds, rounds. This will make 
it easier for the computer to detect if it's in the right spot, especially for zooming in really far. Yeah, so just put round around all that, and now camera zoom 3 has no errors. Still does feel a little weird though, because moving over here, he should be over there. I feel like there's something. Oh, right! Uh, his X is like at 100. Yeah, I forgot about that. Set X to 0. Alright, now it's normal. Alright. And what's fun is that you can do negative 1. <laughs> that is wacky. It makes everything really small, but when you have like 10 objects, they all come in as you get smaller and smaller, and then they all expand outward, all reversed, when you set camera zoom to negative 1. Don't do that though. Um, yeah, so this was the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I don't think I... What? Wait, did I forget something? <laughs>